Hello, this is Craig, and welcome back to another episode of Cruising Off Duty. You can see these clips. This is from our last episode where we were anchored in Navy Bay. This episode, we're going to take off from that point and go on to a beautiful anchorage in the Thousand Islands called Beau Rivage. Now, the Thousand Islands, if you're not aware of it, is part of the St. Lawrence between Canada and the United States. It is by far one of the best cruising grounds around and hopefully you enjoyed. If you're new to the channel, that's where we do our sailing out of Kingston in the Thousand Islands. But in the future, there's gonna be a lot more sailing all over the world. I'm leaving in May for South Africa to sail across the Atlantic Ocean. Should be cool, so check that out in the future. So subscribe, don't miss it. Anyways, back to the tail end of 2018 sailing season as we sail from Navy Bay to Beau Rivage. Okay, we just left Navy Bay. You enjoyed that place, don't you? I do. I, I could spend a whole day there, but we have other things on our agenda. Yeah, we want to go to Beau, Beau Rivage. Right, and I want to inflate my paddleboard and yes, go around, and we also want to go on land and things like that. Yeah, we're going to use our dinghy that we've been dragging behind here, not just to go to that little fort. <laughs> I made him bring it for a reason. I made yeah. him bring it. He wasn't going to. Yeah, so. we got plans. So. We are just heading down river. We are on a broad reach, but we just don't feel like leaning. So we're going to have just the uh, Genoa out, correct? We're having a relaxing downwind We're not going sail. very far, so... No. Well, probably an hour and a half. Yeah, that's not very far. No, yeah. So we're not in a race to get there, so in case you're wondering why the main is not out, yeah, that's the reason. We want to relax. Yeah. We should have a beverage. I can make ginger ale and peach juice. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. All right. And we will film anything interesting that goes by, like that sailboat that's coming. Even with just the one sail up, we're still doing pretty good speed. Anywhere between about five and I've seen 5.7. Winds come up and down. So yeah, no reason to get all crazy and have both sails out when you're not in a rush. I can live with five knots of speed any day of the week. Okay, we are here in Beau Rivage, Anchorage. And you can tell when I pan around, you can see it's not only windy, but it's busy, busy Anchorage. Boats everywhere. Now we're a little anchored a little close to these people. She was yelling over as we're anchoring that there's gonna be 70 kilometer an hour winds tonight. I, I don't know if that was a hint, don't anchor so close to us. So we'll probably have to re-anchor. And I checked wind forecast and of course that's not what it says. It says it's gonna get calm overnight. Okay, we found our home for the night. All we did was lift anchor move what 15 feet to the right yeah no left <laughs> to the left right so now we're far enough away from them that they really can't say anything and we're just a little bit closer to the people on this side which is fine we're still plenty of distance so now we can stay here for the night without getting the fuzzy eyeball from those people yeah yes so now we can go um in the dinghy and go explore yeah let's do that it's too windy to paddleboard right now yes my first plan but it's going to be not windy at all in the morning so we'll see yeah yeah so paddle boarding is probably tomorrow morning when the winds calm down it actually gets really gusty every once in a while and there was a warning that a thunderstorm a freak thunderstorm could go through with 70 kilometer an hour winds but we looked at the radar and nothing's coming so we we are good so we're gonna go explore yep. this is the problem with this area 
Poor guy's holding, pulling up his anchor by hand because he doesn't have a windlass. And look at the sea monster on the end of his anchor chain and anchor. And that's what we find too, but we have a windlass luckily that'll pull all that up. So now he's got a, he's just gone back to his cockpit area because now he's drifting, right? So he's got to get his wife to come out and like try and remove the sea monster off of his chain while he motors before he drifts back into that sailboat. So it's a sucky job. And I don't know why that this place is, Borovage is just known for like really super thick weeds. And somehow or other, as you can see, it's still super popular. I don't really quite understand it. I don't understand why this area is like the most popular anchorage around, but when you pull it up, expect a sea monster on the end of your anchor. Look at this guy sailing right into the skinny little opening between these two islands. Sailed right between them. And... Now he'd really impress me if he sailed right up to where he wants to anchor and dropped his anchor without using his engine. That would be impressive. Another thing he could be doing that would also impress me is if he sails right through here and goes out that tiny little opening at the end there. It's like an itty bitty skinny little passage. I mean, not the wind is in a perfect angle to do that, but that takes some cojones to come sailing in through this little shallow bay. Good for him. I just noticed to add to the challenge, he's wing on wing. His mainsail's out on the port side and his jib or Genoa's out on his starboard side. So he's sailing dead downwind, which means you can have accidental jibes. And I swear he's aiming for that little opening down there. Nice job. Okay, here's, here's gonna be the challenge. He's gonna try and sail through that little opening, tiny itty, but you can't even barely see it behind that powerboat. And look who's coming faster than he is, this pontoon boat. And he's gonna end up being in the opening right about the same time as he is. So uh, let's see how that works out. Here comes the pontoon boat. He's speeding up behind the sailboat. And there's the opening down there. Let's see who makes it there first. It's the pontoon boat. No, it's the sailboat. No, it's the pontoon boat. No, it's the sailboat. I swear they're gonna get there at the same time. Well, good for him for doing it. Oh, wait a second. He has turned. Nope. No, he's gone. I thought he turned to come in here, but nope, gone. Good for you, buddy. Sun is gonna be setting soon, so we're gonna take this opportunity as the wind has died to go for a little dinghy ride like this guy's doing. So, yeah, let's do this. Success. It finally got sunny, the wind finally died, so we're gonna go for a quick zip. has its own island. The guy showed up on a little sailboat. There's another island. Some folks having a, a good time. A party going on on that island. There's a bunch of people on the back deck. Here's the Thousand Islands National Park dock. Another island cottage with a bunch of boats. Binnacles. It's a big rock. At least they didn't flood last year. Our first swans of the season. There's mummy, daddy, and three babies. We're gonna come around the corner and see swans. Any second now, oh my god! So yeah, mummy and daddy and three babies. Ooh, it's very shallow. That's amazing. It's very shallow. Ah, focusing on the swans. Swans and sunset. That's nice. Zoom out. Let's stick around. Oh my god, I'm very surprised they're letting us get anywhere near them. 
We spotted like one little swan or like a couple of swans last year and they did not let us get this close. Considering they got the base. Exciting. More swans than there here. So now we're heading back kind of towards us, right on the kind of other side of a boat ravage. The other side of the land, the island, is this other anchorage. Not as big and not as popular, but still pretty popular. We're gonna lose our sun soon. Another cloud. It's gonna get really dark once it goes behind that cloud. So this is the little dock we spotted. There's no one on it. And there's no signs on it to say closed or whatever. Like like that one there is obviously out of order, but this one's looking good. Okay, I've taken over the camera work. I'm so good because she's so good I'm just like embarrassed about my my workmanship but yeah the, the sunset unfortunately is gonna get ruined ruined by those clouds but we uh, kind of made it to shore on what is this island called we don't even remember do we well, it's one, one of the, the one of the one of the park islands so of course because it's a provincial park so to speak they give you things like picnic tables and sometimes there's barbecue pits you're supposed to pay to come on these islands, but we aren't going to be here long enough to pay for this. No, we're just we're spending a few minutes until the sun goes down. So we'll sit on this patio, this picnic okay. table. Tomorrow, maybe. Tomorrow we'll explore. So Janice went to use the facilities since they're right there. And uh, yeah, I'm just chilling. Watching the last little bit of sun go behind the clouds. And uh, yeah, and we'll head back to our boat. We wanted to get at least one dinghy ride in today. Earlier it was just way too windy and crazy. The wind has died now. So it's a beautiful, beautiful night. is uh, basically a, a cooking, eating area, a group kind of dining area. Um, Beau Rivage, it says. Oh, well, this is Beau Rivage Island. Okay, so this is the main Beau Rivage Island. And then there are other surrounding islands that are still considered well, the, sailboats are the neighborhood. There. And here's a little cut that only the power boats can get into. Wow. The party zone, they were playing music. There's a good bathroom, like not fully functional, but it's got composting stalls. And there's another dock. So yeah, power boaters seem to have a really good time here in the Thousand Islands. It's kindly pointing out the nearest rock. So we're going, giving the rock a wide berth back to our boat. Yeah. Okay, it's another beautiful day out on the water. We had an awesome sleep here in Beau Rivage Anchorage. And some people got up early and left. I don't know, Janice and I can't, just can't figure that out. We like to sleep in till 8, 8.30 and get a relaxing breakfast going. By the time we actually get out, it's now 10 a.m by the time we actually start doing anything <laughs> productive. So today's plan is to, well, first I'll do a pan, show you the boats that are still here and the beauty that we're in, and uh, then I'll show you what our plan of attack is for today. Okay, this is everybody that's still here at this anchorage.
and then there's some boats across here. Now you can dinghy in between here and that anchorage over there, but you cannot motor between it. You can see there's a little symbol for a rock in the middle. It is super shallow in between there, so no motoring. But if you go around this island, then you can get back into there. So if you choose to anchor on that side, you can, but you can see them, but you can't get to them. So the first plan of attack today is to pump this up. This is Janice's new inflatable stand-up paddleboard. We've never used it yet, so this is going to be the first time. Janice is the one who really wanted it, so she's going to ride it. I will film it. I'm sure she will fall in at least once, although it's not very wavy, as you can see. There's not a lot in the way of waves, except for when guys like this come barreling through the anchorage. Yeah, so I'll uh, pump that up while Janice is doing dishes, and then uh, we'll see how she does. registering the right PSI. No wonder it feels like a hard board when you're done. Yeah. I hope this thing is registering correctly because it is rock hard like a board now. So. Hopefully it's all good. Okay, so Janice is about to try her paddleboard for the first time. First time. Yeah, awesome. I'm sure you might fall in once. Oh, you don't want the ball. You want the ball cap on? Yeah. Okay. I have it tied to my hair. I won't, fall. Okay. I won't lose it. Don't lose my police ball don't cap. Don't worry. I have a trick now. I put a piece of the ponytail through and then clip it. So ah, it's so it won't fall off. Okay, good. All right, go for it. Okay. Step one, she's step on one the board. Accomplished. So I got on my knees here without falling. All right. So I gotta try and stand up without falling. And she's slowly drifting away. It's been what, three weeks since our lesson? Yeah. This is a bigger board, so does it feel stable? Well, it's tippier because it's long, I don't know. It's probably just as wide, but we'll see. You, you timed it poorly with the motorboat waves. All right, give it a shot. Good job, baby. She's up. She's up. Oh, well, yeah, it's a it's a performance board. It's not a. You're right. For its length, it doesn't seem very wide. All right. Well, you'll get used to it. Yeah, I'll get used to it. Fall in for 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 the camera. Eh? 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 No, it's not gonna happen. She's doing well because there is pretty breezy. Behind an island, so we're not getting big waves, but it is. There's some pretty big gusts that come through. Did you want to try going around the island, or is that too much? No. You want to get in the dinghy? Yeah, I'll get in the dinghy. All right. If I'm going to follow her in the dinghy as we go exploring, I'm going to have to switch to this vlog camera. It's a little different, but still a really good camera. Much smaller, much easier to uh, to use. She's still out there battling away. Janice is way over there. Let's go catch her. look off in the distance you'll see Janice fall in in three two one there she goes oh Janice fell in Janice fell in for the first time and I wasn't close enough to really film it damn it <laughs> I wanted to see that does anyone think I'm a little bit evil for wanting to see her wipe out no it's not that it's just it's funny she would laugh at me as well okay she made it to the dock and now she's just got to get off eh. She's like, eh, she's on. Hey, Janice, you did it. So on your knees, it was easier to steer? Yeah, Okay. Well, it's easier to stay on. Yeah. It got windier. I think you were trying to I stay on. I steer around those rocks, so I ended up going over a shallow rock, which caught my fin, and it took me over. Oh, okay. No matter what I did, I was going sideways, so. Oh. 
Well, I'm sure with experience. I taste it. Yeah. Okay, take note of where Janice left her paddle on her paddleboard. Notice how it's not under the little elastic bands that it comes with. That's important for later. All right, so Janice, Janice has got her tied to this cleat, and I got my dinghy cleat tied to that cleat, and we're gonna go for, oh, I put my life jacket away. We're gonna go for a little walk on, this is Beau Rivage Island. It's a big, uh, bigger island, it's not huge, but I mean, it's big enough to walk around. All right. People just got finished camping, and I'm interested in finding out, you know, how easy it is to camp, because I take my dad and my son. Yeah, her dad and the son like camping. I'll to interview. Yeah. Okay, we'll see. Okay, so we just talked to some campers there, and they said... So they booked that site in February, and it's yeah. already booked through next year, yeah, but we're going to definitely try and book it for a weekend next year. Maybe during the week it would be easier to get. Maybe. The weekends are obviously packed. But they said it's $16, $17, but then they add a surcharge and yada so yada. It's like 20 bucks, and that is cheap compared to yeah. Ontario Parks. And 20 bucks Canadian to camp for the night. And 6 bucks to beach and kayak. Yeah, it's weird or that that's not included. Or 90 cents a foot for a dinghy. So that's yeah. still cheap when overall. I guess. Yeah. Renting a campsite. You, you know, you bring a, a canoe with you, they do charge you extra for the canoe, which is yeah. kind of weird. So here's the view from the windy, from the windy side. They're down there in the non-windy side over on the other side of the rocks. So we're going to take a little quick explore because theoretically we're supposed to pay for our dinghy to tie it to the dock. We don't plan to be here for more than like 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so we're not going to pay uh, 90 cents a foot for our dinghy. It seems a little exorbitant considering we're only going to be here for just a peek. Peaky peak. So our dinghy's 10 feet long, so yeah, I mean, $9. If we're going to stay here all day, it would make sense, but... Oh, another campsite. Yeah, it's campsite 6. It looks like it might have been vacant last night. Yeah. Was this vacant last night? No, oh, no idea. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, so this one's protected from the wind. It's very nice. Because you got a rock here, that's, and you got I little two... For this. And Adirondack chairs up there yeah. that they give you part of it. And the kids were cliff diving last night on the side, on that side. Right, that, yes, that rock was the cliff diving. So somewhere around here, we saw them from our boat, which is over there. Um, there was guys jumping off rocks into the water, so I'm assuming it's down here. And obviously it's deep enough because they didn't die. We watched them jump over and over again. Let's check it out. I don't trust that. I can see rocks, but I mean, if you jumped out there, it seems deep enough to, to manage. So, yeah. And you can see there's another dock over there with a bunch of kayaks and canoes and yada yada. So this is the rest of the uh, path. Pretty nice. Awesome. Little uh, wood chips to keep the uh, weeds at bay. And there's some big boats tied to that dock. Nice. Yeah, this is more uh, birdie and woodsy and that's what Janice likes. Right, Janice? She likes hikes and she likes hearing birds. I'm not sure. Yeah, this one's more, more like the actually the, the forest we have right beside our house, which is very woodsy like this. You've seen previous episodes. You've seen us walking through that. Okay, so there's the go hut, the uh, composting head as we call it. So yeah, it's there, but I don't know. It's a long way around. It's like a swamp here. Yeah. So it's a swamp over there. So we. I know there's only one on the island, so it's got to be a path. Yeah. It's, yeah, if you're on the other <laughs> island, it is a long walk to get to the head. That's the other anchorage away from our anchorage that we can't get to directly. We have to go around the island, but that's that's the other island or anchorage. Let's go to the edge. And Janice was saying how it smells so good because somebody around here is having a campfire. Yeah, and it smells, I can smell the pine trees. Yeah, that's true. It does smell really good here. Very naturey. Very naturey. <laughs> It's officially ascent, naturey. So that is a big, big boat anchored to a dock. Sweet. Janice is doing a Cirque du Soleil to get our dinghy untied around all the stuff that's on the dock. They're on. It's caught. It's caught. Caught on what? It's caught up. The knot is caught on the cleat. All right. So I'm going to get in here. These lovely people that have the campsite behind us were just telling us, uh, of course, they're the ones that told us the prices, about it, everything, yada, yada. But they also said that they got a water taxi to come here. That's why all the stuff's on the dock. And they're from Gananoque. And we said, oh, what does the water taxi charge you? And she said, $25. And Janice goes, oh, that's that's actually reasonable to water taxi you over here. And she goes, per person. And there's like, I think three or four of them there. Okay, that's not reasonable. So thank God we have our own boat. All right, I'm gonna dingy back and I'm gonna monitor Janice's progress going back so she doesn't run into a rock again. She's on the dock. Let's see how she does.
Now, just to show what kind of a noob Janice is at stand-up paddleboard, she actually gets on her stand-up paddleboard before realizing there's no paddle. Yeah. Where's your kayak paddle? It's got to be there. Well, hold on to the dock because you got to get back. Okay, bad news. Janice got on her dinghy or on her stand-up paddleboard, and there's no paddleboard paddle. So she left it on the dock and there's a chance it blew off the dock into the water. So now I'm going to go looking for it. I'm wondering if that's it there. There's a white thing in the water there. That's it. I found it. Silly girl. Craig saves the day. Woo! Found the paddle in the weeds. Now I got to get out of here before I run my engine onto the rocks. Bye for now. I showed her the paddle. She's a very happy girl. Yay, Janice! <laughs> to our boat. Okay, we're back at the dock. Janice is all changed to get back in the dinghy. Pants on. She wants to do more exploring. The other side. Yeah, the other side of the island. But the problem with that is it's already 1.30 and I told her if we're going to sail back, we got to leave by 1 in order to get back because I think it's going to take us like 5 hours to get back. It took 3 hours to motor here with the current and the wind behind us. So, yeah. So, and then we still have to drive back from Kingston to Ottawa, yada, yada, yada. So if we're going to do more exploring, chances are we're not going to be able to sail back because that would require tacking against the wind. Most likely going to have to motor back. So, yeah. But it is going to be super windy on the way back. Like, you can see the tiny little white caps coming around the island in front of us, which is blocking the wind. Uh, so out in the big bay there, it's going to be choppy as hell. So it's going to be one uh, bouncy ride home. So, all right, let's go for an exploration. Quick, quick. quick. I only mentioned that we're going to go out exploring again for the reason to show you why we don't sail back. Now there is plenty of wind to sail back, but as you're going to see a little later, it is right on the nose, which means we would have had to tack back and forth and back and forth on the St. Lawrence River, which would have been a long passage no matter what. But Janice really enjoys exploring by dinghy of the various islands and stuff. So we're going to use our extra time there and then we're going to have to motor back to make it back before dark. But in case anybody sees this footage later and wonders why we don't sail when you can clearly tell there's wind, that is the reason. You gotta get your memories where you can. Great day, but we are getting a late start to take off. Yeah, this is just about to pull all the weeds off with the, uh, with the pole as it comes up because there's going to be a ton of it, as we always know. These nice people in a dinghy that were just going by going to pull the weeds off for us. Is that nice or what? Yeah, we didn't used to have a windlass and it was really heavy to pull this up. All that island of weeds came off of our anchor. So now I just motor real slow while Janice pries off the rest of the disgusting weeds off the anchor. This is the only anchorage I know that's like this. Uh, it's so popular, but for some reason it's like the weediest place imaginable. If you look over at that boat over there, you see all the weeds hanging on it? And this guy over here, the weeds hanging on it. You'd be amazed how much is clinging to your chain as you come up. And then of course when your anchor finally gets up, it's covered in weeds as well. Yeah, as you can see, it's 22 knots right on the nose. You can see the waves. We're going to be pounding and splashing and pounding. And because of that, we're only doing, well, it ranges between two and a half and three and a half knots. And we are going uh, 2,500 RPM. So, yeah, this is not going to be a fast trip back. Boo! Say boo. It's a big move. And we're going to be bouncing like this with lots of splashing. That's what slows us down is when you start pounding into waves. Oh well. It's hard to know whether you should just motor dead into the wind to get it over with or tack back and forth a bunch of times. We'd, we'd move faster over the water but we really add a lot of distance. So we want to get back before it's dark. <laughs> right? So we get, Yeah, we got to get back. We want to try and get back before it's dark. All right, well, we'll manage through. Yay. Okay, we are back at our club. Yep, a great home week, sweet home. Great weekend. It was too good. 
we, we really went too fast. We should have stayed longer. For sure. Yeah. But we had to kind of power motor sail because we needed to make time. We couldn't yeah. be tacking all the way across the river back and forth. We would have been here in the dark. We so. both get have to work at like seven tomorrow. Yeah. Awesome. We got here. Uh, motor sailing actually got pretty good time. It's 7 p.m. So good timing. All right. Next two weeks from now, we're going to be back on the boat, and we have no idea no where plans we're going. So far. No plans. Nothing. That's what so sailing's far. all about. So if you have a cruising sailboat, you know what we're talking about. You know, it depends on the wind angle, where you want to go, and stuff like that. It's all for fun, right? So we go wherever it's easiest. Or more fun. Or more fun. Anyway, that's it for now. If you enjoyed the episode, thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and safe cruising. Bye. We anchor and hoist the sail.